the VAR show the one place for your weekly football update Hola, very warm welcome to the VAR show, the show which talks about all the various major football leagues in detail. Today, we are going to continue the theme of interviews and we have a very, very special guest with us. We have the former Everton forward, Mr. Marcus Nathan Bent with us. So without wasting much time, I would like to first thank Marcus for coming on the show. Thank you so much and welcome to the show. And I would like to begin by asking you, how are you and what are you doing during this pandemic period? I'm fine. Um, we've been self-isolating for a while. Um, I've just had a baby. We've got two dogs. My wife and I are um, self-isolating. I mean, it's hard. Um, but the good thing about it at the minute is uh, the weather's good. I mean, today it's raining. Um, but imagine, well, we're queuing up to go, get into the shops and stuff. Imagine it was raining or snowing, especially in England. I don't know what is going on with you guys over there. But um, it's all right at the minute. Um, it's frustrating. It's tiring. And uh, again, we all need to see kind of the, the back end of it and where it's going to end. Um, but um, I think it's going to be quite a while. Um, I, I think maybe next year. But we all need to stay positive. And um, as we're doing right now, talking to each other, communicating um, and getting through it. So, you know, let's talk about a lighter topic that is football in comparison to what's happening in the world right now. So, we'll talk about your journey, you know, from Brentford and all the way to Co- Cornard United. I do not know you're still playing for Cornard United. Mm-hmm. How has the journey been? Um, again, so what I'm going to say before I go on, I can't hear you properly. But what I, I knew, I, 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 I understood what you said. So, basically, from Brentford, um, as a youngster, um, uh, I, I had a dream, I had a, a focus, a tunnel vision, I call it tunnel vision. My dad taught me to have a tunnel vision to um, succeed in what I um, believe in. Um, it was a hard journey, but um, from Brentford to Crystal Palace, then to um, Sheffield United, then to Blackburn, and then into the Premiership, I, I kind of uh, saw my dream and lived my dream. Um, uh, and, and played with a lot of um, great players like the likes of Mark Hughes, Andy Cole, uh, Matt Janssen, David Duff, um, I mean, Tommy Gravison, etc. etc. Um, I mean, I could go on, but um, yeah, it, it was great to have the career that I had and um, succeed in my dreams and my tunnel vision, in a sense. So, you know, uh, you also played in Indonesia, I think in 2011-12. Mm-hmm. So, how was the, how was it there? You know, was it like a cultural shock for you? Well, um, when I, when I chose to go out to Indonesia, um, it was, I was 34, I think. 34 at that point. Um, they treated me well. Uh, it was so Indonesia, Jakarta. So, I, I landed in Jakarta. And it was an amazing place. Um, and then I had to fly to um, uh, Kuku, um, which was a short journey, which is probably, I think, about 45 minutes. And then we drove for about another um, hour. Um, so it was different for me. It was um, a new um, experience. Um, they treated me well. Um, the majority of um, the players that played with me in Michikuka were um, in, uh, internationals in uh, the Asian um, uh, first team. But we used to have to spend two weeks away and two weeks at home. So it was a lot of traveling. Um, so a, a new journey for me, uh, a new experience for me. Um, but I loved it. Um, very humid, very hot. Um, a lot of floods, as you know, <laughs> when the the, 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 the summer, the, the heat, the, the, the rain comes in. Um, so it was a new journey for me, a new experience, but I loved it in a sense. 
so you know i i usually do not talk about this topic but you know like uh, there are a lot of bad stuffs going around in the world in regards to racial discrimination right now especially in the mm-hmm. states so i wanted to ask you this question how prevalent is it in the english footballing culture in your experience what discrimination racism yes. are you talking yes. about racism discrimination yes, yes. um well i mean from a young age i've had um, racism and discrimination um i think with uh, asian footballers um getting into the english game or foreign game or even just football it's been hard for them but even with black footballers it's been hard for them too um but with what's going on right now um it's hard um I mean there's a lot of violence going on in a minute in America and um uh, the, the Trump's talking about the, the the him getting the troops out to stop it but I think it, it's got to a point now where people are uh, kind of throwing their hands up and, and 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 saying no stop it's got to stop now um will it stop I don't know I mean I listened to the radio today and again um having my parents and my father from Jamaica on a bus that had to sit at the back of the bus uh where white people would sit at the front of the bus etc um it's come on um a lot but we still got a, we still got a lot to do uh, I think because of what's happened i think people are throwing their hands up and 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 want to um uh i don't know i i, I don't want to say the wrong words i don't want to really um i have an opinion but i just don't want to say the wrong words i just want people to see it for what it is and um there's a long journey ahead and and just stay calm we're well, not stay calm but don't go out and be violent don't uh, make it worse um there's a journey with us and with uh, the culture that we're all in to uh, make it better so i hope the situation resolves quickly and everything falls back to normal conditions and i hope for the best but let's move on to a lighter topic again as football did you ever plan into getting into coaching no i've never uh, wanted to coach what i'd like to do is um uh, mentor the uh, younger players um uh, being a manager that's not what i i want to do but i like to mentor maybe coach and um get them to a level that where they want to go and 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 be better about themselves and even just counsel it not so much counseling but um talk to them and communicate with them so if you had to choose one coach who was the most influential in your career who would that be okay so you be watching my podcast right and my zooms kind of right okay so what one came up for you i don't know like uh, it's your wish i i i i do not follow so much so uh, you can reveal new names here all right okay so being at uh, blackburn um even sheffield united um uh, do you know what I'm going to give you a fresh one David Webb Dave Webb so when I started at Brentford he was very hard he coached me into being um a, a man um and not just being at home and actually um going out in the world and 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 kind of fulfilling my dream so David Webb for me So I think in the January of 2001 2001 2002 you won the uh, Premier League player of the month. Mm-hmm. Then do you think the next season you went down to Ipswich did that affect your career? So it said again. So you won the uh, uh, player of the month with Ipswich in January. So going yeah going down yeah. So did uh, you stay with Ipswich in the relegation I mean in the in the lower table? So did that affect your career? No, no. At that point it didn't affect my career. At that point I was doing really well and I went on loan to Leicester. Um Ipswich went into administration where it the club went bankrupt. Um so they had to sell me to make money. 
So I went to Leicester and um, played alongside the, uh, uh, the legends of um, Les Ferdinand, uh, Paul Dickoff, um, Brian Dean, uh, Ian Walker, in, uh, English goalkeeper international. I mean, I could go on, Frank Sinclair, centre-half, uh, Matty Elliott, who was our captain. Um, uh, uh, so I was um, a big part of uh, Leicester at that point. Um, we were winning games, but we were conceding goals at that time, and um, we went down. But the last game of the season, or maybe the third or fourth last game of the season, we played against Everton and I scored um, the winning goal um, at the back post. Joe Yobo, who is a, 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 a big part of Everton and a, a, a great part of my life too, because he became my roommate. Um, but I, left, I then left Leicester to go to Everton. So Ipswich was just the... I'm not going to say a stepping stone. It was more so because they went into administration and we uh, got relegated. I had to move on. So, you know, like, uh, I'll ask you, I introduced you as a former Everton player, but you didn't have quite a success you would have hoped for in Everton because you had a good start. No. Nah. But yeah, well we, did, well, we did have success. I had success in a sense where... The season, the first season we had, uh, we became fourth in the Premiership. Um, we beat Liverpool after uh, a couple of years, which uh, Everton hadn't. The season before, Everton, uh, the Blues, my family, who I still see them as my family, nearly went down. Um, but we were playing a formation where I was playing one up front. Um, with Tim Cahill behind me. So I didn't really get many chances to score a lot of goals. It was kind of me holding the ball up and working really hard to kind of work opportunities. But really and truly, at that, in that season, I didn't, I wasn't angry or frustrated. I was just working hard for the team. The season after, we got our success at fourth um, in the league. I would have hoped to have played alongside the likes of James Beatty, who got signed by David Moyes, um, but that opportunity didn't come. Um, so I had to. I, I got frustrated. I got angry, and I felt like I needed to move on. And it, um, I mean, I wish hindsight. I wish I stayed, but sometimes, as an adult, as a player, you want to go and play, and you need to go and. Um, succeed more and for your family and, and and go and do the stuff that you need to do so you know if you had to look back at your career and you could choose one moment which <laughs> one would you choose like to cherish for the rest of your life cherish oh oh okay um can i give you two you can give me a lot um how much ever you want but don't make it a double <laughs> you giving me one Okay, all right. Cherish for the rest of my life. Okay, it will be um, so. The I think it was the last game of the season. We played Southampton. Um, James Beat had come in. I came on a sub and I, I uh, scored the winning goal. I was angry at that point. Um, uh, we sent Southampton down. Jamie Red, Jamie Redknapp, Harry Redknapp. Um, not that I don't like them, but we sent them down. Um, and that was my goodbye to um, Everton. Um, so that that would be my highlight of my career. Not saying goodbye to Everton, but just scoring that goal so we can um, uh, look at our season and um, be safe in the Premiership. So you called Everton your family. How do you feel about Liverpool this season? Uh, Liverpool this season? Um, they've won it already. I feel like they've run it already. Um, they're talking about coming back on, I think it's 20th of June, right? 20th of June. Um, uh, Klopp's talking about if they want to take it away from um, their home grounds, they play wherever they want to play. I mean, Man City, Man United, Liverpool, I mean, Everton is nowhere to be seen within the championship table. 
but they're they're they're, they're certified. Um, I mean, you've got Leicester up there, who I played for as well. They're they're up the, in the top ten. Um, so I, I think Liverpool are going to win it. I mean, you've got six games left, right? So I think Liverpool are going to win it. And congratulations to them. They've done really well. The players have done really well. I mean, it's hard for the players because the fans won't be about in the stadium when they get the trophy. Um, but I'm sure when it all comes about, um, it'll be amazing for them. So, you know, like uh, you have had a lot of experience, good and bad ones throughout your career. If you had to advise yeah. a young player, what advice would you give him? What advice would I give to players? Yeah. Um, I mean, be strong, be confident, um, and keep trying. Obviously, you've got to listen to um, your coaches and stuff. Um, tunnel vision, be confident. I mean, sometimes in this world and this day and age, sometimes it's hard, but be confident and listen to your brothers, sisters, family. Um, and if you can't, then go your own way in a sense, but be confident. So on that note, I'll ask you one final question, Marcus. It's quite a controversial question. Whom do you prefer, Messi or Ronaldo? Uh, I'll go with Ronaldo. I'll go with Ronaldo because he's an all-round player. He's played in Europe. He's played uh, at Man United, and he's he's now in uh, Italy uh, with uh, Messi. Don't get me wrong, Messi is an amazing player. Don't get me wrong, amazing player. But Ronaldo, for me, he's um, played in all different competitions, scored a lot of goals. Um, don't get me wrong, Messi is an amazing player, but an all-round player, I'd go Ronaldo. So on that note, Marcus, thank you so much for talking to me and I wish you all the best for your future endeavours and I wish you all the luck with your newborn baby. So take care, stay safe and hope we can talk again soon. Bye. Thank you, brother. Thank you.